What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is all about the Vulture Droid's explosives dropping brother, the Hyena Bomber. If you know your galactic politics and Outer Rim tax history, you know that many corporations were able to have military grade weapons in order to defend themselves from pirates. This allowed for things like Vulture Droids and Homing Spiders, but it seems that bombers were a bit too excessive. Like most bans on certain types of self defense weapons, it gets a bit slippery with the logic. Snail tanks that can fire concussion missiles are okay, but bombers are a bit too much. I think it has to do with bombs being less accurate and way more powerful, so the Trade Federation asking for exemptions to build bombers is kind of like somebody saying they need a grenade launcher for self-defense as opposed to a rifle. So it wasn't until the Clone Wars actually broke out that Bactoid Armor Workshop started to mass-produce hyena bombers. At a cost of only 23,000 credits, it was only 3 grand more than its Vulture predecessor, and around 6 times cheaper than the bombers used by the Republic, like the Y-Wing. This is one of the best examples of how much more efficient the Geonosian builders were, as it packs in so much more than the Republic manufacturers. Just start with its armament, which includes 4 light laser cannons, and a diverse payload of 6 proton torpedoes, 6 concussion missiles, and 4 proton bombs. It's carrying all of that at once, and I know it's not fair to directly compare it to the Y-Wing, a ship that was also meant to function as a long-range, hyperdrive-equipped heavy starfighter, but my point is that the Hyena is an expression of CIS military philosophy. A squad of two Y-Wings, two ARC-170s, and four V-Wings would cost the Republic about 1 million credits. That could buy you 44 Hyena Bombers, or if you wanted to keep it equally diverse with the CIS versions of the Interceptor, Fighter, and Bomber, you could have 12 Hyena, 12 Vultures, and 25 Tridroids. Of course, they have to contend with the Republic Shields and Rear Gunners, but such a great number of ships that could be purchased made it so that even though none of those CIS ships have hyperdrives, there could be so many of them stationed across the galaxy that their sheer numbers could deal with any Republic threat that popped into real space. And this is made even more practical by the fact that, like Vulture Droids, they can attach to the ship's exterior, or could be neatly lined up inside of ship hangars. Though of course they were larger than the Vulture. At a length of 12.5 meters or 41 feet, it was nearly twice the length of the Vulture droid, and the exact same size as the X-Wing. But it wasn't much taller, just an Ewok more than its predecessor, with a height of 3.1 meters or 10 feet. Despite this greater overall size and substantial payload, it was still relatively fast. Just 30 km per hour less than the Vulture, with a top atmospheric speed of 1,150 km per hour, or 715 miles per hour, making it faster than the Y-Wing and TIE Bomber. So despite their size, they are still quick and agile, seen here being able to dodge turbo lasers and weave in between the bridges of the Venator. Moments like this show us just how powerful the Hyena is, with its proton bombs being able to blow through the Venator's hull. And other times we see that even when shot down, the resulting explosion upon impact is strong enough for these hyenas to take out the sturdy legs of an ATTE. But it also has a great AI system. While the precise bombing coordinates would often be directly entered by CIS personnel, if it needed to, it could determine on its own the best target to drop its payload on, and which enemy starfighters it needed to engage with its laser cannons. This level of autonomy is something seen in most CIS fighters, but greater than most droid vehicles. As for loading this thing up, it appears to be done manually by B1 battle droids. Each of the head units acts as an ordnance pod, with the top section of the main head containing the droid brain and iconic red photoreceptors. I'd assume that this loading could have also been done by some other purpose-made loading machine, but you can see that when resupplying, it can split the wing. Breaking about midway and then separating into a wider, four-legged stance, it becomes sturdier and low enough for the B1 to insert the proton bombs. When they weren't being loaded, they could stand straight up just like a vulture droid, saving you some hangar space by not being so wide. Vultures can hang like bats from the ceilings of things like the Lucre Hulk, so although we never see this, I do wonder if the hyena could do this too. When it was time for them to deploy, a droid would activate them upon the orders of a CIS commander. Using audible, electronic chattering noises to communicate with each other is where you get the name Hyena. <laughs> droids speaking to each other via vocoders is actually pretty common with the CIS, having tactical droids speaking orders to HMP droid gunships, with it replying back audibly. The army will follow. Leave no survivors. No, I work And so we see that starfighters are speaking to each other as well. We even see that a T-Series can speak directly to a hyena while it's in combat in order to modify its previous orders. 
Calculate your flight path to terminate in the main hangar. This combined with an ability of the head unit to lift and move independently from the body, allowed it to survey its surroundings and then chatter the location of new routes and enemies to its squad mates. The first time the bomber was used against the Republic was during the Battle of Feilin. Here they destroyed all of the Republic's unsuspecting forces. That same year they nearly crashed into the Republic's cloak ship, on their way to trying to bomb out Senator Organa on Christophsis. Later during the Battle of Ryloth, we saw how devastating they can be against a large village. Just a handful of them were able to set this Twi'lek village up in flames in just a matter of seconds. Shortly after that, we got to see the hyenas nearly kill Mace Windu, but also see just how gangster Wat Tambor was. We will all perish for the glory of the Separatist Alliance. And then some were allowed to be commanded by the droid assassin Helios 3D. This IG series droid had his capital ship boarded by Anakin and Obi-Wan, forcing him to transfer his consciousness into a B-1 in order to escape. And speaking of droid consciousness, I wanted to know your guys' opinion on the sense of self that a hyena might possess. We see that a crashed HMP was able to push through and make one last shot, and we see something similar with a hyena during the space battle of Sullust. After given the order to take out Ventress, a damaged hyena bomber tries to fight through its malfunctions and suicide bomb her position. We mentioned earlier that starfighter droids have a somewhat robust AI, so do you think that this is evidence that there is an I in there that wants to complete this mission, or is it just following orders? After Ventress survived, the fight continues on Dathomir, where we see the hyenas being used first to soften up the witch's defenses before land units are sent in. And the final time we see them is on Scipio. A surprise attack destroyed C-70s and LA-80s with ease, and then they later engaged the Republic's response team that came to rescue Padme. This engagement on Scipio shows the best and worst parts of the hyena, with its payload being devastating, but its lack of shields making it easy to pick off with the Z-95 headhunters and other Republic ships. Once Vader cut down the CIS leadership, it is believed that all of the hyena droids died with the Separatist movement. But we know that vulture droids were used in great numbers by anti-imperial forces, most notably on Umbara. So I suspect that some hyenas are out there somewhere in the galaxy, laughing about the fall of the Republic. So that's it for its history, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind the scenes stuff. I'll just start by addressing the animal in the room. No, I'm not aware of any hyenas in the Star Wars universe. We just gotta shut off that part of our brain when it comes to those kind of lore questions. I think it's cool that on Ryloth we see that the ATTE has targeting identification graphical displays, which tell the clones that it is a hyena that is approaching. And it first appeared in the webcomic The Clone Wars The Fall of Fei Lin. And in Legends, it was first named the Hyena Bomber in the Clone Wars campaign guide, and in canon via Ultimate Star Wars. And the names Vulture and Hyena are representative of the Republic's state of decay. Vultures and hyenas are known for picking from the carcasses of animals killed by something else, symbolic of how Palpatine was actually the one killing the Republic. As for the stats and all that, additional information comes from the books On the Front Lines and the Encyclopedia of Star Wars and Other Vehicles. So that's it for the Hyena Bomber. If you want to connect with us, help support this channel, or get your own copies of the reference material used to make this video, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, pour out a Jawa juice for OG Watt, and the Force will be with you. Always.